welcome back to Lemon Lane Cottage. Today we are actually in my craft room. I have been feeling inspired to get creative, so I started a couple of quilts. Actually, I started them a couple of months ago, but I am in the home stretch. I need to get them finished and mailed off um, this week, hopefully. So I thought I would go ahead and say hello and do our little chit chat from up here. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about legacy. It's such a big word and I would use the word influencer but I kind of feel like social media has taken over that word in kind of a salesy kind of way and that's not what I mean at all when I talk about being an influencer. I am talking about within your sphere, within your family, um, what kind of a influence what kind of a legacy are you building i want to be very intentional my kids are grown and unfortunately there are no do-overs in raising your kids up um, you can always build bridges mend fences apologize for those times where you um, messed up because we all do as parents but i am focusing right now on my grandchildren because they are still being raised up not in my home but they do come here um, and I do want to be very intentional with the time I spend with them and by that I mean I want to um, teach them something every time they're here and I don't mean set them down in a classroom I want to um, just show them the basic niceties, the basic manners, the basic skills um, that I think have somehow been pushed to the side. Um, we are creatures of this thing here and I see that my grandchildren spend quite a bit of time online either in front of a screen somehow. And I totally understand it. It is the world that they live in. It is a world that they're being brought up in. But what I want to hopefully do is show them um, how to set a table, how to bake a cake, how to grow a garden, how to do basic seam, seamstress work, those kind of practical skills that um, they might not be getting anywhere else. When I grew up, and I have a feeling most of you are somewhere in my um, age bracket, um, we went to middle school and we learned, we took home economics. I don't know, it was called, probably called something else everywhere um, in different areas, but for us it was home ec. And we learned how to sew and we learned how to cook and we um, took typing and we did these kind of things that were practical, um, but I understand they don't really teach those anymore. So. I want to be sure that I influence my grandchildren in that way. The other influence I want to have on them is scripturally, is um, as a woman of God. I want them to see me and to hear me and to model me in that way as well. And that doesn't mean that I am sitting and doing memory verses with them, although there's there's nothing wrong with that. and. Um, I had John this weekend and he always goes to church with me and Sunday school they have a memory verse so when he comes out we go over that memory verse and you know what it means and that kind of thing but I am talking more in just the everyday things pointing them towards God for instance John and I went on a hunt for tomato hornworms and if you do not know what a tomato hornworm is google it but be prepared they're disgusting um, but they are devastating to tomato plants and John got so good at spotting them we we picked seven and of course they are a treat for our chicken so we picked seven that we happily tossed into the chickens I had a chance to explain to John um, the cycle of life and how God created those hornworms what they do who their natural predators are um, even why they are here, all of those little things, and to, to point him back to the grand design of God. Um, we had another conversation 
about how they camouflage themselves and how wonderful it is that animals have that ability to blend into their surroundings and how that's necessary for um, their own protection. It's their um, way of getting away from or hiding from their natural predators. So um, I just simply said something like, God is, isn't it amazing how much detail God put into even something like a tomato hornworm that can blend itself. And he you know, named a couple other things that um, also can fade into the woodwork. And so just those little things, letting him know that God is in control of just those little tiny things. So in the future, when there are things that he cannot explain, the bigger things, um, he can trust God in those as well. Um, in the book of Philemon, and if you have never read it, it's one chapter, but it is uh, full of rich nuggets on um, forgiveness and trusting God. But Philemon 115 says, uh, for perhaps he departed for a while for this purpose that you might receive him forever. And I love that. Um, sometimes people depart or sometimes things don't go your way for a purpose that is revealed later. So my hope is that in instilling the little things with my grandchildren, um, they can trust God in those for the purpose later moments when there is no easy explanation for why God allows things into their life. So my challenge to you this week is to look for ways that you can incorporate um, the goodness of God, even the justness of God, into everyday conversations with those that you have influence over, with those who you would like to leave a legacy mark with. Our pastor gave such a good explanation to the parable of the mustard seed in Matthew, how it is the tiniest of seeds, but when it grows, it becomes mighty and it, and it becomes a protection, kind of a place of rest for many, many birds, one little seed. And what he said made such perfect sense. We don't know what that little seed um, sown may grow into one day and how many people may find comfort or rest or faith in that little mustard seed that we planted. And so pray that my legacy with my grandchildren is like that little mustard seed that grew into a great big tree and they feel the safety and the um, security of resting in the branches of faith that I have sown in them. He also related the story of the seed that grew into Billy Graham, and I'm gonna read it to you. Um, Billy Graham was mentored by Mordecai Ham, who was an evangelist himself. He was a big tent revivalist preacher. Mordecai Ham was mentored by Billy Sunday, who a lot of you may have heard of. He was a ball player who became a pastor of a very large church. Billy Sunday was mentored by Wilbur Chapman, who himself was an evangelist who preached to thousands. Chapman was mentored by Dwight Moody, who most of us have heard of. Dwight Moody led thousands of people to Christ. Dwight Moody was mentored by Edward Kimball, who was a Sunday school teacher whose mission was to bring all of the rambunctious boys in his class to Christ. That humble Sunday school teacher planted the seed of Dwight Moody, Walter Chapman, Billy Sunday, Mordecai Ham, and Billy Graham. None of us knows the seed we're planting now. What might it turn into? What might the seed that I am sowing in my grandchildren, what kind of legacy might that bring to the glory of God? All things are possible. So now I'd love to hear from you. Who was it that planted the seed in you? Who was it that inspired you to chase hard after Jesus? Who was it that, um, who was it that influenced you in your walk of faith? Leave it in the comments. 
it's never too late for us to be that mustard seed. Who knows who might come to rest in our branches. So that's all the chit chat for today. I hope that you enjoy the rest of the video. I made breakfast muffins with John. We had a picnic out on the patio table. I'm going to show you a sneak peek of the quilts that I'm working on. I hope you find a little bit of inspiration in there somewhere. And as always, thanks for stopping by.